I think all the spiritual seekers look for the easiest path, easiest way to to know the truth. As yes, the other day I was pointing out that there are so many messages every day. It is a very, very intense group. I would say that Usually, if you see the groups, they meet once a month, once a week, or once a day, do some rituals, prayers, and go back home. Go back home, literally go back home. They just don't think about it. They don't pay attention to that awareness. But I can see that all of them have very one-pointed devotion to that pure self. And that is more than enough. If you, are, you have that one-pointed goal to know the self, if you are desperate to know the self, Not just mere inquisitiveness to know the self and if I get the self, it's good. If I don't get it, that's also good. If there is a casual attitude, then it is very hard. And I'll explain you why is it hard if you have a casual attitude and why it is so easy if you're desperate. So what happens is that... Um, what this process is and what why we are doing and is there any need to do it are we scared of death that's why we are doing it or are we scared of god or some power and we want or we want some siddhis or we want why we are doing it what is the need let's say if we behave normally <laughs> as the normal world is behaving and continue with what we are doing you know whatever the job is giving, liking, disliking, judging, commenting, all our life we can live in mind and we can die. It's, it's not something unusual. That is the usual path which the whole world is following with few exceptions. What is wrong with that? You will see that a lot of people are happy in that and I think if you talk about the spirituality they think 
it's all crap spirituality these are this is the sick minded people who talk about the spirituality maybe and what's the need like you need some support from god are you not self sufficient or and this question is not new this question is there for thousands of years there are very we use the word chosen few because we don't know why some people are interested not others why maybe one in thousand is interested not the whole world is interested in spirituality why is that if we put a bhagwan satsang on youtube there would be maybe 100 likes but if you put a some nice you know some music or song there will be millions of likes why why it it does not uh, is not that interesting if it is the most important thing and you read any spiritual text from any religion they will say self realization is the only goal of human life but in which school have you read this text or the teachers have told you that self realization is the only goal of human life who has told you at your job your employer has told you in interview that look uh, susan i'll give you a job but i'll tell you one thing self realization is the only the most important goal of human life and and i would only employ you if you continue with your search to self realization this job is only only for the one who is into self realization who asked this do you put in your resume that i am a spiritual seeker for self realization and life is unfolding in that way would you write it can you talk to people when you meet people if it is such an important thing when you meet your closest of friends and family and relatives do you ask them how much is the progress in self realization maybe you don't even discuss with them and if you try to discuss they think they will think you will you are crazy you know we'll you're not going to catch up with susan anymore look i'm not <laughs> anything to do with susan i'm just giving an ex- name because her name is next to my name but i'm just then why is it like let's let's just try to see is it that means maybe we are stupid maybe why we are doing it maybe let's say because we we have read bhagwan or we have read a text or we have read something and or we are unsatisfied lot are we depressed <laughs> or are we uh, psychotic is our brain working in a different way why are we doing it why very few people do it why very few people go on this path and then then the then the seeker get, have this doubt that why so less people get it and maybe i'll not get it because you know out of a million only one person gets it but just see how many people are even interested in it how many people are interested in it hardly anyone so when there are so less people interested in it and and so many less people interested really focused on it then it is so difficult and lot of people just love it at intellectual level i don't want to name people but you just see the most most famous people on media who talk about the spirituality none of them are realized souls they have read text they are good orators they have done some meditation they are doing some meditation but none of them are realized there are few who are, who are but then so many of them are not but they are good orators they have read books and they can have a debate they can talk about it and 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 they will never get realized that's the other problem also why because they are using this as an intellectual tussle they are not using because you can talk about physics you can talk about quantum physics neuroscience chemistry whatever topic you are interested in that doesn't make you realized same is with spiritual talks you can be a very good orator but that doesn't make you can be a vedantin you might be knowing all the scriptures and you can have debates but that doesn't make you free why is that the simple truth is if you keep using the mind as the tool to be free and and getting 
into the web of thoughts how can you be free from thoughts how can you transcend thoughts the only thing which it requires from the mind is attention so there are two things one is we are working from the mind body complex we have a mind mind is projecting outwardly we see this word the dream word which let's say it's real word and we are interacting with people we are judging analyzing liking disliking using the tool called as mind all the time which is projecting outwardly now as a seeker as this technique of self attention or self abidance or self inquiry we know that if we pay attention to the witness in us which is just an awareness and it is very hard to describe even this entity because it is not an intellectual understanding you have to practice it to understand what this entity known as awareness is and when you pay attention to this pure awareness attention is what is there which is attending to awareness here it is a dualistic model to start with so awareness is being attended by the mind only because the wavering mind which is going all over the world projecting outward it's now looking towards this awareness how just paying attention to to this entity which we are which is not commenting just watching just witnessing and it is a real entity if you see all the thoughts and all the talk internal talk whom it addresses to to the entity called ego and what is ego ego is this fake belief in us which thinks that we are this body mind complex and all with sensory impulses sensations all the uh, all these sensory organs it gets all the information goes into the brain perceives it according to its conditioning and then gives all this information to this entity called as ego so we can live like this all our life and we can do some good uh, results in this world like we can even help others we can gain some money we can have good relationships and we can be a good ego rather than bad ego but whether you are a good ego or a bad ego you are still in the space and time domain which is governed by the changing mind and the changing body but let's say this awareness which is all pervading which is also giving light to this body mind complex i say that you can be free from this mind game because you are pure awareness and this awareness is all pervading its subtle current how can you be that you can only be that if you give away these tools if you drop the tool of mind because it is not an intellectual understanding that i am not the body mind complex and i am pure awareness and brahma i am brahmasmi and i am free i am that no it is not because whatever you will talk is the mind talk so how to be free from the mind to be uh, to be attentive to the awareness and not to the mind and what is the mind mind is all this which gets all the information from the world look it is not that you will be like a vegetable after this it's not like that but you have to segregate you have to separate what you are and what you are not once you are able to do this by all any spiritual method once you come to the cream to the crux to what the source what you are then it is okay then even if the mind is there body is there because nothing is going to disappear they will be all there but it is like a sieve you have to separate yourself from others and that's why all these teachings are really good like neti neti you are not this you are not that you are not that but the easiest and the best method is when you pay attention to what actually you are so look the self attention is is a path which starts at the goal so the goal is to be self aware 
of pure self be a i am pure awareness so on this path we start at the goal so the goal is that i am pure awareness so let's stay like pure awareness and don't involve mind in any activity throughout the day now people will think how can i function it how can i function in life if i don't use my mind but now now just remember what is mind mind is an entity which which is producing only thoughts thoughts are popping up on some thoughts you act on some thoughts you don't act some thoughts you think they are good some thoughts you think they are bad some thoughts attract you so much even if they are negative that you get up at 3 am in morning and you are so worried about something which has happened a year ago because that thought came you woke up and you can't sleep now so so what who is governing whom are you uh using mind for your own benefit or mind is using it you for its own in its own ways this is what you have to sort out now all our suffering is because we are slave of the mind what mind says we believe so we have a filter in our life we have a lens by which we see the world this colored lens colored glass actually paints a picture in to all of us in a different way we might be going to the same gathering and we all will have different experiences bad and good and different nature because we all see the world by our own conditioning if you want to decondition yourself it is very easy it doesn't matter what is conditioning of susan or sanjay we both can just drop the mind and just stay as awareness which is the same in all of us and how to do it is focus pay attention to the pure awareness to the witness within so we are starting where we have to end now we have just neglected the mind completely we have not purified the mind we have not gone from tamasic rasic to satvic we have not changed diet we have not changed work we have not we are not living in a cave all our sense stimulations are same you know our interactions in the world are same we have not changed any external environment food or whatever some people might have changed i am not saying that but let's suppose that we are just on this path now what is going to happen is because of our habit and our situation and the the mind will will be there it is not going anywhere it is just standing there but when you don't pay attention to it what will happen it has its own craving old habits and it will you will feel more because now you are paying attention to what it is doing and you can see how unruly the mind is and it's creating more trauma and even creating doubt to you like how can you be free what do you mean to be free from me i am governing it is you actually your thought will come it is you it is me genuine it is it is the self a self is talking it's no mind talking what do you think mind so all these thoughts will come lot of doubts will come and these doubts will stay till you have some interest in the mind but if your interest is in go getting into the undifferentiated awareness which we all are but we are also mind body complex because because we use this tool to interact in this world otherwise the awareness the pure awareness without the body mind cannot interact with anything actually you just see between you and me all pervading is pure awareness but you don't see it you don't even feel it but the moment a person is a realized soul you sit with that person and you feel it how strange it is but if that person moves out then uh, the awareness is still there it is in that person in his body outside his body it's all pervading in finite then how we don't feel it exactly like if you have a radio when it is tuned to a frequency you can hear the music but the those sound waves are all going everywhere you don't keep hearing the sound we don't have any like otherwise you can just listen to all those sound waves from your ear you need a transmitter a, a 
a, an instrument which can convert that energy and give you the sound. The so same is this pure awareness which can flow from you. Actually, it is flowing all the time, but we have closed the gates of this awareness by just this thing that we are giving uh, weight to the mind. And the mind is just like, you know, when in front of moon, you put your fingernail and you can hide the moon. The moon is so big, it's so vast. But the problem is that closest to the opening, you are putting a door. So what is this door? This door is of the mind. You have to give, give away this filter of mind. So the grace or, you know, we take it very like we we make it very spiritual and religious and god and devotion and all because maybe it is our conditioning the way we take it but even a scientist can say that let me know i am not a devoted i don't believe in god and can i find can i can i be there yes he can be there if you pay attention to the awareness and so a lot of people say that buddhists don't believe in god buddha never believed in god but I believe, I, be, I think that he believed in the same thing what we call as God, the pure awareness. So whether you call it God or doesn't call it God doesn't matter. But it is that energy. And this energy field is all over. But that concentrated energy to tap into it and to move into it, you have to give up only one thing. Which actually is not a big deal. But because we are so attached to it, we think it's a big deal. That is our ego. And as a seeker, we always can be watchful from the pure awareness. When we are, when we watch the thoughts, okay, when you pay attention as pure awareness, you see thoughts are coming and they're trying to talk to you and you keep watching them. And sometimes you get swayed into it, but you keep watching them. And then what happens is that that watching is also watched and then you realize that this is what you are there's nothing beyond that because all this uh, they all these thoughts feelings and emotions are serving ego and this ego can be watched that i amness in us is completely fake but you have to pay attention to these things, these entities which you can still see because I amness you can't see that clearly. But when you start watching it, watching it, and then the opening comes, actually even that watch gives you a lot of contentment, bliss and peace because from here there is a gap between you and the thoughts. You can watch them, you can nip on the bud, you can ignore them as soon as you watch them. You don't get entangled into it. But if you stay here longer, that longer can be even maybe fraction of a second for someone or someone it could be six months. But yes, the magic happens here when you're watching and you, you're watching and then you, you notice that in that watching, the entity what you were seeing as ego that drops completely and then just only you which you are always awareness that shift happens that you know that this is just simply emptiness there's no one watching no one paranoid thoughts are not for anyone and when the moment that entity dissolves then you are watching the thoughts also dissolve because there's no need because that entity for which they were all serving has completely dissolved in that watchfulness in that awareness in that purity but you have to be there to get this all impurities getting burnt out in this watchful and that is the practice that is tapas that is our uh, attention to the pure awareness here comes the role of the mind in form of attending to it it is not a mind game. It is more of an attention thing. Here we are not contemplating. We are not uh, psychologically thinking or creating anything in us. 
but when you sit there you know what it is and for how long you have to sit I will say all your life till the last breath you sit there I don't know maybe for some it might be a matter of a fraction of a second for some it might be a few months but but hundred percent the results are hundred percent if you stay longer now that longer depends on on your own uh, interest in your mind game because you get disturbed you get into the mind and then you come back to the awareness you don't even have to believe on any God to reach there you don't even have to uh, look in look anything beyond than just awareness attention to awareness so it looks it is dualistic to start with but then that that watching the one which is watching that drops into that pure awareness the one who is doing this job like it is like paying attention and all that just completely drops that i amness dissolves in that emptiness bhagwan uses the term i but there is no i left actually you have to still call something ahem or self or but it is a it is a non self thing if you want to call it self then you should call it impersonal self not a person but you are still conscious so that just pure consciousness is there within you and outside you and and it you don't achieve anything out of it i should say there is like you don't become a billionaire after knowing it or i don't know you don't get anything out of it but you you still know you have got everything because it's it is uh, it is something which makes you know that there is nothing beyond it this is what it is let's say you are looking for some achievement in life you know you as a player or as a scientist and and you keep doing and at towards your last years of life you say oh i could not achieve what i wanted to achieve or you know there's something is left or if you want to earn money and you know you wanted to make 1 billion and you are just left short of a billion <laughs> maybe unsatisfied here you can be the poorest of poor your body might be ha having a disease your situation is very bad doesn't matter but you are so contented peaceful joyful blissful and you know 100% there is nothing else now whatever is happening is just the momentum of life will take it to some extent whatever wherever you don't even mind that so looks like you are happy with your own self 100% and your situation 100% and the people 100% because it is like waking up from the dream of that cage that suffocation of the mind and you know how the mind even the people who feel so happy in the mind you know that they are suffering but they they are not agreeing to it because they don't understand it but when you are out of it things are so clear and transparent that it looks like you have a it is the true wisdom you have the new vision or the third eye of shiva or i don't know you can use you can use any metaphor to to make others understand but it's you even cannot know what it is and the others cannot understand the value of it because it is nobody can explain even the words like sat chit ananda truth consciousness bliss truth yes it is truth but for someone mind is truth then how would you say you know for people in the mind game for the mind is truth consciousness yeah the people who are having in the mind frame they are also conscious and sometimes they also feel bliss <laughs> after a few drinks at least so even these three terms cannot justify to even explain the this thing 
but i feel that the only thing which can justify is that you know what it is when you are there so as as an experimental design it is very hard even to design an experiment to understand it because who will understand only a mind mind has no clue it is beyond mind language whatever language you use the language will feel will always be short of it because language is from it rather than it from the language so how to make other understand is only by silence and only if the other person is not skeptical other person is not using his mind other person has dropped his mind to maximum what he can or she can do and then sit in pure awareness with the person who is experiencing who from whom the awareness is flowing sit in silence probably they can get it otherwise it's a it's a secret which you cannot reach and that is why you ask anyone the you can you can on this path of knowing your awareness the fastest method is to be in contact with someone who knows it and that is why all these gurus and teachers and uh, you know the significance is so important i'll give you an example you go to any place where anyone has meditated and realized you enter that room you enter that place even if that person has left that place thousands of years back thousands of years ago buddha was on in bodhgaya under that bodhi tree you go there i have not been but people say you can feel that peace i went to a place yoga vashishta gofa in rishikesh where yoga vashishta lord rama's guru did all his sadhana you go there you would have never experienced a silence like this you go to ramana ashram you sit in the meditation hall and you can experience that silence is still radiating from that matter that structure people go to arunachala hill they feel that power how because for thousands and thousands eons of years people have meditated there and they have absorbed there so that's why and look you can also say it's a, it's a arunachala shiva it's shiva himself so the it's a it's a column of knowledge fire whatever it is but this is the truth so your your progress becomes very fast when you sit with an open heart with someone who knows it because it is ever flowing but who will know it the one who is not using mind who has dropped the mind who is almost just on the verge of getting into this fire because even with bhagwan not everyone got it some people even before seeing bhagwan they got it some sitting with him some in a few months and some never so how to know it there is only one technique you have to drop the mind by whatever technique you think is appropriate for you you can do devotional songs bhajans japa prayer focused attention which we call meditation or you can be in pure awareness or you can just understand contemplate and be pure awareness and ignore the mind and all thoughts and don't indulge in any thoughts because anything you do in this world you have to use mind isn't it that's why vairagya this passion has so much of importance what others are doing what you know what is others facebook uh, update or whatever it is you know you're not interested what is in the news what is happening because mind is projecting outwardly if you are interested in anything in the worldly you know game how can you how then you are ignoring the mind 
And so the people who were sitting in caves, contemplating, going, doing sadhana, doing less work, retired, all that helps. Because you can achieve if you are really good, even in middle of the people, it's not that it's not possible, but it is more difficult. So making your life more simple and paying attention to the awareness and watching the mind, whatever it's doing, just ignoring all thoughts, the grip of all thoughts will loosen up and gradually and slowly you will have less thoughts, less demanding thoughts. They will not be really coming with psychological, emotional baggage and slowly it will dissolve. Now mind produces a lot of different thoughts, psychological thoughts, emotional thoughts you know, me thought, egoistic thoughts, or it could be simple thoughts like you're doing a mathematical calculation. The mathematical calculation, what you're doing or an equation or at work, that is not at all a burden to you. That is not creating any issues. It's only the doership and emotional attachment to things and objects or beings. That is what is causing the problem that takes away energy from awareness, attention from awareness to outside world. So bring your energy back and pay attention to this neutrality in us, the pure witness in us, which is always watching. Remembering yourself that you are never this body, you are never this mind. Mind and body belongs to the matter. I don't belong to the matter. And mind and body belong to the matter, they will dissolve in matter. They have come from matter, they will dissolve in matter. We are just using it for a very short duration. And we are as alive and as fresh and as lively and as young without these appliances of mind body. We are much vaster, we are an intelligent system. without birth and death and not going anywhere and all these concepts of going to this you know heaven or hell and all those things and law of karma all that belongs to the body only the moment it is your experiential knowledge that you are not the body mind everything drops all these laws of hinduism or whatever wherever they come from they all drop because you are pure awareness, always the same. And you are never ever involved in anything. You are just a witness in this body, seeing the actions of the body. And the good thing is that all your life, you thought that you are the doer. The moment you know that you are not a doer, all the doership, what you think you own, has, will drop immediately. I'm not even talking about previous births, but from that moment onward, everything just drops. Because once you know that it is a dream, it is a dream. Then what is the burden of the dream left? Nothing. And what happens to the dream object? Are you still uh, concerned about it? No one is concerned about the dream object. <coughs> Here the dream object is your body. And whatever has to happen to the body in the dream as a dream object will happen. Because your attachment to the body is nil, it doesn't affect you. So going out of the time space, going out of this time space domain of the mind, the only thing which can free us is is us only. So we think we are the body mind, but we are the awareness. So let's behave like awareness in all our dealings in day to day. Then don't put the mask again of ego. Then don't become person again. Just be awareness. How the awareness behaves. Awareness behaves exactly like 
God behaves or someone who, who takes care of everyone behaves. He has no interest in anything and he has got or he has interest in everything. It's exactly the same thing. He is always happy in the situation with himself and others. Though for day-to-day -day practices, he might be correcting things, but inside he knows there is nothing to correct. Everything is absolutely perfectly right. So how do you move in society? You don't move. The body is moving and you just watch it. You don't even have to pretend anything. If a body looks silly, your behavior looks silly, it looks silly, that's okay. So you don't care about anything because you are not involved. Who will care about things is who is involved, isn't it? That I should behave like this in, in front of this person and behave like this in front of this person. Because this person is rich or poor or my boss or my servant or whatever, doesn't matter. It will stay the same because it is uninvolved. Only the person involved wears mask over mask over mask. We talk in different way. We Our tone changes in front of different people in different circumstances. We try to impress upon others in different ways sometimes, you know. We behave awkwardly. We try to save friendships. We say yes to so many stupid things in life, you know. What is that? That is all mask. Ego. Because ego always tries to save itself by doing good deeds, bad deeds, wrong judgments. If you want to go beyond, you have to be awareness. More you stay as awareness, more you unfoldment occurs. As I have said many times, this getting into awareness is a very slow process for most of us and it is a blessing because if it happens suddenly, it can make you like a madman. You know, in um, India, there are a lot of people I have heard, I have read so many stories of dhuts, they look like madmen. Sometimes they are not wearing clothes or they are throwing stones or they are talking nonsense and you know they are because that whole power energy has come to them all of a sudden you know the body doesn't know how to handle it. It's good it is coming slowly so the people around us don't think we are mad. So they still think we are mad but maybe not that bad. We don't look that mad. So some people are very you know how should i say they think it's not happening to them that quickly it is good it is a blessing but i can guarantee this unfolding is happening gradually and slowly even while you are in the satsang you will not be the one who was there before satsang unfoldment has happened and to a major level whether you know it or not your mind has no clue about it With each satsang, with each contemplation, you are changing. And this change is happening not because of just listening, because of your openness, because of your heart opening to this knowledge and understanding and absorbing into it. And it has no boundaries about where you were born, how you look, what is your educational level, what is your age? Nothing. It only depends on one thing, your openness. And your inclination more towards it rather than the mind. More you sit with it, more it will open up you. So each and every step in this, even listening and contemplating on it, that pure contemplation is opening you already. The same person who is attending the satsang, if he goes and attends a group of friends and gossips, 
you will you all we all know how bad taste it is after you bitch about someone isn't it after bitching how it all feels so bad isn't it does it feel nice that ah, i have done bitching what a day you know we feel so bad it's it doesn't give you any any happiness or joy or contentment but i'm sure that after satsang so many times when i close it it is an effort even to move from here to do something else <laughs> because it's so peaceful it is so because you're talking about the absolute only you're not talk, i'm not talking about anyone else except your pure self and my pure self in whatever way the language can convey it and the beautiful thing is here no person is there though we we enter into this group on the zoom meeting with the names but we are that nameless formless pure awareness that pure awareness is talking to pure awareness what a beautiful way that absolute has created he has created a game a riddle and to get out of that is again a very interesting thing but it is available to everyone but people are not interested so they don't know but if you are interested there is a there is a there are thousands of methods actually and all methods are correct and which method is best is the one which you have some inclination or your heart gets you there that is the best method this pure awareness is what we all are not what we think as we are this body which is going to die soon whatever life we have in this body is is that minus that body is going to live you can say that that time is wasted or gone but whatever is left we should just pay attention to the awareness which is using this body mind and is witnessing all the actions and this is a job which anyone realized or unrealized or a seeker who is on this path has to continue till the body drops it is not that you do it for one day or one second and then it's all done it's not done till the body is done whether by practice or by, by paying attention till it becomes your natural state but in natural state also you know what the truth is till nothing is left till everything burns away just pay attention to the awareness have you seen those insects they come close to the flame and and sometimes they are a bit far and when they come they just die they finish that flame finishes but the attraction of the flame is so much that they keep coming closer and then they get burnt away same is our ego you know that ego which is now attracted to this knowledge this fire of self and you stay closer and closer and initially the mind can revolt the mind will say it's so boring i still want to enjoy this world who cares about self and awareness and all these things it's not for me i'm still young i have to enjoy life and then you can drift away but if you stay there stay there stay there and you finish it will finish you and then you will realize the mind 
which was looking for all the happiness through objects and beings in the world was completely stupid. This is, I am the king. I am the creator. I am that pure bliss. How can be the bliss be in the objects which are changing all the time, decaying, changing, transforming? You get attached to something that thing will change. You all have experienced that first dent in a new car, you know, how painful it is for some people. Or if a beloved leaves you or the body gets injured or disease or financial losses, you know. Anything which we are attracted in this world always at the end give rise to suffering. But then the mind goes for next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. If we pay attention to the pure awareness and see the, all the activities of the mind and how it tricks people and yourself and tries to act smart, you pay attention and in that attention, in that I amness, that I amness drops and then only awareness is left. So this is the path in which we start where we have to end. You stay as you are uninvolved, pure awareness, which is not judging anyone, including our own thoughts and actions. All the running commentary is gone. It's not liking anyone, disliking anyone. It has no friends, no enemies. It is seeing but not seeing. It's just penetrating through things, not judging anyone. So these are the eyes which we are looking towards things, but actually not looking. That is pure seeing. And everyone understands this pure seeing. When a person with pure seeing sees someone, you feel so much of love because those eyes tell the truth that he is not judging me, he is not analyzing me. Have you seen the eyes of a custom official when he scans you? <laughs> he treats you as a suspicious person, you know how his eyes are, suspicious eyes. So the eyes of pure seeing, make sure your eyes are of pure seeing. You see things but you don't see anything. You don't see any garbage in even in garbage. You don't see a bad person even in a devil. You just see, just Like if there is no mind behind your eyes and the eyes are doing its job just seeing, accepting everything as it is, total acceptance, not judging, not liking, not disliking, not analyzing, accepting everything as it is. If our sibling is nasty to us, accept it nasty, or the partner, or parents, or boss, or employee. 
you might still want to correct them but not taking anything personally because you are pure presence impersonal presence you have stopped acting as a person as an individual as a separate entity because you are that all pervading awareness in which all the entities comes and goes because what you are seeing is your own Im image your own dream it's your own world you have created this world if in your world there are people nasty it is your own mind which has created these nasty people accept them love them hug them and if it has produced good people also accept them hug them love them doesn't matter it is your own dream how can you say that this part of the dream is good and this part of the dream is bad dream is dream your own creation you are the source accept everything there is no one your family or this is not family or this is a stranger there is no one stranger or everyone is stranger treat them equally this is exactly the same treat them all as your family or no one as your family unconditional love to everything equally go into that which is absolute which is not deriving energy from the absolute and creating its own small world give away everything to that absolute stand with absolute praying to the pure awareness watching tune yourself into it how to tap into it is to pay attention to it listen to it they say in zen listen to the clap from one hand listen to that clap from one hand to that non duality pure awareness and when your mind knows they have you have lost interest in it it will drop completely it is there only because you have interest as an ego as a body mind complex but the moment you pay attention only to awareness whatever comes whatever happens the mind will use its own old tricks tell you look you are losing money while you are paying attention to awareness you stupid fellow and you stay as awareness you are losing relations people don't like you you stupid fellow you stay as awareness <laughs> whatever it says to you don't believe ignore ignore have faith in pure awareness stay with pure awareness stay as pure awareness abide in pure awareness so the all the false objects false identification everything will dissolve and this process is beautiful even if it causes suffering that suffering will be so sweet suffering of uh, still not there <laughs> that thing it's is also even if it makes you cry or you you cry for it you know that cry is better than crying for materialistic things oh i have lost half a million dollars you know it's better than that because this cry for that absolute will give you more joy will purify you
and that is the pure satsang you know staying in company of pure awareness all the time company of truth talking about that pure awareness it's satsang with one people or many or staying in it and it is the closest to us it is always there always accessible to us you don't have to go to a temple or a church for it i saw a lady today and she said in this covid times i suffered a lot because i couldn't go to church i said you it's all god is here she said no 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 it is good to say but it's not i have to go to church because it's so hard for people to understand this you know and and look sometimes what we say that going to church or temple it's more of a social gathering we love we are man is a social animal you want to talk to people it's again a mind game it has nothing to do with spirituality you have some good time with people you ask them so many things about their life your life you share your sorrows and you feel lighter and you come back home it is pure entertainment because this temple is your body and that in temple is that god pure awareness always there and it's not none, none other than you how good this news is that everything is in built the software and all the books written about this god the whole world has created so many religions on it even they have killed others is you only you pure awareness you are that that nameless formless pure bliss know yourself and be free forever look within pay attention to the pure awareness all the time if you forget pure awareness bring your attention here whatever you are doing or not doing wherever you are i land this with a very small note on buddha i read when i was long long time back when i was a student i am still a student but in younger days there was a insect bite on his hand he moved it and then he realizes his mistake and then he came back and he did it again so one of his students asked what are you doing that insect has already gone he said the first time i did without awareness without paying attention to the action this is the biggest sin i have done so he did it again <laughs> to correct it i'm just giving you an example that how subtle these things are to understand if these pointers can help you to understand pure awareness because sometimes people listen to it through their mind and they don't know how to behave as pure awareness so try to watch your each action with people without people talking not talking doing not doing even sitting alone you can watch whether these actions are coming through that impersonal presence or as a person you don't have to judge yourself but try to move transform yourself from person to presence it's not that difficult but you have to pay attention a person who is not paying attention can never change and that is the only reason why alcohol is so bad in all religions because it takes away the discriminatory power that that awareness goes away you become dull it's a it's a depressant 
and that is why it is considered so bad while smoking is not that bad because smoking activates brain i'm not asking you to start smoking but i'm just telling you the i'm trying to differentiate which what is really bad alcohol call is really bad if you want to go 100 million years back on your path then keep drinking alcohol it is not like i'm not passing a sermon to you i'm not religiously saying this to but i'm trying to explain you why these things are so important alcohol doesn't help at all it 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 actually obstructs your path because it takes away that attention which you need i will be very glad to know one enlightened soul who used to drink every day yes once you are enlightened you can drink <laughs> but, but not before that anyway it's more of a joke but do what really helps you to be in that attention mode it's not a paranoid mode it's not like you are paranoid about your actions you are not judging them but you are acting from that pure awareness rather than as a person and if you have questions we can discuss next time but hope this helps everyone thank you om shanti 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 Thank you. Thank you Sanjay. Thank you everyone.